Well, I'm Brian Redmond, and I'm curator of archaeology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And today we're here to talk about a small collection of Paleo-Indian stone tools from a site out near Salem, Ohio, in Columbiana County that were found fairly recently to tell us a little bit more about the first people to come to North America and specifically to Ohio. The people we call Paleo-Indians came again to Ohio at the end of the Ice Age, the late Pleistocene. Now some of the earliest radiocarbon dates we have for their sites date back as far as about 13,700 years ago. And we have Paleo-Indian sites over a good part of northern Ohio and other places across the Midwest. And usually what we find are stone tools, which tells us they were definitely hunting peoples. Uh, a lot of the stone tools were used for skinning hides and butchering. Uh, they also probably collected plant foods and lived off the land in kind of a seasonal cycle. And these artifacts were all collected by uh, Donna Jackson, uh, the landowner of the site. We looked at this collection, I looked at it a number of years ago, made some records of it. And then more recently, uh, my colleague Metton Aaron uh, and Michelle Beber uh, made a, another survey of the site and re-examined these artifacts and found a few more in the collection, again, the date to this really early period. The stone tools, there's just five that were pulled out of the collection that seem to date to this early period, to the Paleo-Indian period. Three of these were found together in the same part of one field. The most distinctive is this little fragment here of what we call a projectile point or a spear point. Some people call them Clovis points. Uh, they're very distinctive because they have a, a groove or a depression on one side we call a flute which was probably made or, or put in the point so they could tie it to a shaft like a spear shaft. Now this is, this is broken and it's been heavily burned, which is also a bit unusual. We're not quite sure how some of these tools get burned. But it's made of a raw material we think uh, is similar to what's called Vanport or Flint Ridge Flint or Chert that comes from Licking County, Ohio, uh, south of the, the location. So it's a distinctive artifact for the Paleo-Indians and definitely is a hunting or butchering tool. Now this tip is interesting too because it's made of a special type of chert or flint that comes uh, not from Ohio but from Harrison County, Indiana, in southern Indiana, uh, almost about 500 miles away from uh, the site. So it was imported or it was brought in maybe by the Paleo Indians or traded in from Indiana. So it shows evidence of uh, raw materials, flint material, being traded over long distances which we see at a lot of other Paleo-Indian sites, but it's very significant to find it at this site in Northeast Ohio. These were studied very closely by uh, Dr. Logan Miller of Illinois State University, who was an expert in microwear analysis. He looked at all these tools, uh, and he noticed on a number of these, like this tip here, that there is some evidence of uh, use with meat, uh, wet type uh, fleshy material, as if it was a butchering tool. So we have a small collection of Paleo-Indian ar artifacts that show us everything from a, a finished and discarded, spear point, to tools that seem to be brought in possibly for eventual making into finished tools. Now what's interesting is this site is very close to uh, the location where the Hartley Mastodon was discovered back in 2001. So this was a partial skeleton of a female Mastodon that dates back to about 12,900 years ago. So pretty much the same time as the Paleo-Indians from Ohio. And this site is only about 800 meters away, it's not too far. And at that site, no stone tools were found. There was no direct evidence of butchering or killing the Macedon based on things like cut marks on the bone. But there are a couple of vertebra, a couple of the, the parts of the spine that have some interesting fractures that relate to two particular vertebrae that, that would have been joined in life, which may be evidence of Paleo-Indians butchering the carcass, maybe separating the spine and, and basically uh, breaking the carcass into smaller pieces. That's the only definite evidence we have that Paleo-Indians might have been involved in doing that. But there were no legs found. There was pretty much a torso from the, the head back to the tail and foot and ankle bones, but no legs, no long bones, no scapula, shoulder blades. So important parts of the skeleton are missing from this discovery, which seems very unusual for a site that we might call a natural death site. It's a real mystery about this site in terms of what has happened to the leg bones. Now one predator that would have been on the scene or in that area at the time would be the Paleo-Indians, the hunting people that live there. And they could easily have, have removed the legs in the process of, of disarticulating or, or pulling apart the skeleton, harvesting the meat. Uh, perhaps this animal might have been butchered a little bit outside the bog, which, which actually would have been a pond at the time, and removed part of the skeleton and then possibly just deposited the rest of the carcass in what would have been a freshwater pond 
kind of like a natural refrigerator to preserve it. We don't know exactly who did this, if you will. It's kind of like a murder mystery. You know, we don't have a direct evidence. Uh, we don't have a smoking gun about who exactly did this. But we have a site with unusual remains. We have a time period when we know humans are on the scene, at least nearby. And now we have a site right up the hill, about 800 meters away, where we know Paleo-Indians were there uh, doing, maybe doing other things, but possibly uh, maybe they were responsible for some of this uh, butchering. We can't say for sure now, but it makes the site much more interesting and a much more interesting scientific location for further study.